All right, guys, what's up, everybody? <gasps> Tensions are running high here at Tugamore Land. They're high? Tensions? Tugamore Studio ten, at Living Church. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. In yeah. our uh, in our world, tensions are running high. Hey, we are. We're not we're, mad. We're drowning in blessings. We're drowning. You keep we're, saying. We're drowning and in blessings. And it's true. And so we have. You know, like when you ask. Good things. Happen. It seems like this. It seems like I was praying, saying, God, do this. God, do this. God, do this. God, do this. And then God was up there like, I will. I will. I will. And then he did it all at the same time. Yeah. He said, boom. It's all done. There you go. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. thank you. Like but those also, buckets at uh. Like those buckets of the water park, you know, the water park and like on the top of the water slides, they have oh, those giant they buckets fill, they and fill they up dump and then they dump and it like knocks, yeah. it knocks That's my son exactly down. exactly how I feel. <laughs> Tensions are a little high. We got bu buckets of blessing from heaven bombarding us. What do you see what we're sitting in? We are what well, they don't. Well, I mean, we only point the cameras at these walls. Look, it has to look better than it did the last few weeks, right? I, I hope don't know. so. Yeah, we at least have our tug of more sign back. We are out of we, our temporary studio. Yeah, back in our, well, not back. We're now in our new, new per permanent, new permanent, permanent studio. It, uh, as I look around, it is not finished. There's tubs no, and right. boxes and cans of paint and broken televisions hey. and extension cords and drills and a soda can. <laughs> That's okay. We're still in. We're, and we're, the metal asterisk from our Matlock building yeah. is in this room. Yeah. So and like, yeah, it's good, but it's better than where we were. All day. So, you know, here at Tug of More, we talk all the time about where we are and where we want to be. And so right now we're right in the middle of that tension. Yeah. It's a little bit chaotic. But it's better than it was. Yeah. And we've been pushing through a uh, transition from selling a building to yeah. moving into a building. Uh, we we uh, filmed an episode just two weeks ago. We called, we were doing the mukbang. <laughs> yeah. We were eating lunch and talking about stuff. They sometimes they like cut the clip recap things and then they put them on the Instagram and things. Uh-huh. The you one, said that like such an old person. I know. I am a little bit. <laughs> and then I lean into it. Uh, but... They posted and like you could hear us chew. That's okay. That's disgusting. Well, hey, nobody. I apologize, y'all. That I, I don't deal with it. No, I felt so bad for. Give people. me a sandwich right now. You know the problem with being on a diet. You're hungry. You're hungry. I'm always hungry. You're I, always hungry. I'm saying if I go on a diet, I I think I end up eating more in the end because I'm so much more focused on food. I I, I uh, might be eating better when, food. If I go on a diet, I do really good for like three weeks, and then after three weeks, my body is like. Feed me. And yeah, because and last week you were like, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. And then today I'm like, I'm about to eat this microphone. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, I have something I need to tell you. Okay. That one of our friends uh, here at Tug of More, he, he had my back because fallible is a word. It is an actual word. And I spelled it correctly last week on the thing. Uh, I said it and then we were like, is that a word? I don't know. But it is capable of making mistakes or being erroneous erroneous which is another word that we have erroneous to but uh yes that's a word that Ernest p world used to use hey that's true uh, let me tell you what i had someone from our tug of more uh tug of more army reach out and you know what they told me what they told me that that dangly thing on your cell phone looks ridiculous no they didn't yep it's i had at real. least i had at least one thousand people <laughs> message me this week <laughs> So We've you spelled a word wrong, but than... I was culturally relevant with your jump rope cell phone. No, I spelled the word correct. It was correct. Oh yeah. Okay. I just wanted you to know. I did. We we had good words. I uh, I like. Uh, I actually don't like. What the? I'm gonna have to work to forgive you in my heart. The number of drinks you have, in contrast. Look at my look at my cup holder. Well, look, I have a cup holder for no cup. <laughs> We got it set up so, in, in so, our old building. Our, our team was always like, you have got, two they cups, got us water, all the things. But today I brought Starbucks and this is just water. It's okay. I forgive you. You want to have the cheetah cup? I forgive you. <laughs> Make you feel better. <laughs> sorry. No, thank you that you forgive me. I, I'm sorry that I have a drink. And so you don't. <laughs> last week, our episode was on uh, saying we're sorry. Yeah. We, sorry we talked first. about the power of. Uh, in relationship to not always have to be right and that yeah. sometimes we need to admit 
our portion of fault right. and step into, I'm sorry. If you have a hard time, you're like the Fonz and you say, I'm go listen to that yeah. one. But we actually had a couple people reach out kind of the, on the other side right. and asked us to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, at the very end, you asked me a question. You said, what, uh, what do you do if you're the person receiving the sorry? And uh, we talked about it for a minute, but we had a couple people ask, yeah, forgiving, forgiveness is a struggle. Yeah. Can you talk about what that looks like, how to do that? And uh, we've talked about it a bunch at Living Church, but mm -hmm. not really here before. And I think yeah. as leaders, we have to learn to forgive all the time. And yeah. you can't go into where you want to be if you're holding on to stuff from the past. And so we have yeah. to figure out how to forgive. I don't know about y'all, but I've had some people straight tick me off in my life. Yeah. No, right. I've had some people lie to me and do me dirty and tell me they're going to do one thing and then right. they do something else. And so that's called a fence. Yeah. And so not a fence. No, not a That's fence. what's in your backyard keeping your dog from running away. <laughs> offense. Offense, yeah. That offense um you know hurts your feelings. Right. You're now offended. Yeah. And and we have a, a choice of okay, all, dude, all of us have been offended. Right. Right? Everybody no, right. somebody did something wrong. There's a hundred reasons from like giant to tiny and we have to ask ourselves, okay, if we really want to get to the more we're tugging into more. Right. Do we want to be shackled to the past? Right. Am I willing to forgive? Am I yeah. willing to say, I'm going to let that go. I'm going to, I'm going to put it past me. I'm going to receive their apology. And, uh, I, I hear all the time though, uh, people say, yeah, but I don't know if they were really sorry. Mm. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if that apology was sincere. Yeah. And then they hold on to things because of they're putting so much on the other person. But what we've learned is that forgiveness really is more about ourselves mm -hmm. than it is the other person. That it really doesn't matter anything about the other person. It's up to us to figure out how to forgive. Forgiveness is hard. It's super hard. We have new we have windows in this uh, studio, and I was I, about to ask, are you distracted? Yep, because <laughs> because I see uh, one of our work trucks and my old trailer driving around. I'm like, what are they doing with my trailer? Where are they it's going? Not, I gave it to the church, but it's, it's not my trailer anymore. Yeah, but, but I have emotional attachment. <laughs> okay. Before we get into the like how to forgive, yeah, let's just admit. Oh, it's the word. How excruciatingly painful and difficult it is. How? Why? What? Like, like, dude, it's hard to let go, right? Of when somebody screwed you over, right? It's hard. To, it's hard to let it go, and it almost feels good to be mad. Yeah, it almost feels good to be angry or to be vengeful. Right. So it, let's, it, instead of just getting into the like, you no, know, talking right. more, we, we get too real. Right. And so like, instead, of, I, I, I've heard a hundred sermons in my life on forgiveness. Right. And you know what they all say? You need to forgive. Right. And then that's all. And I'm like, duh, duh. Right. I, okay. Right. But, but how, how, because man, this is hard. No, right. You're right. The first step is admitting that I, sometimes we don't want to like, but, I, what I hear pastors talk about, you know, Jesus was getting crucified on the cross and they're literally whipping the dude, killing him. And right. we're pastors. So the Bible is our context. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep looking backwards. <laughs> and so Jesus, he says, uh, he he's dying. Right. And he prays, father, forgive them. Right. For they know not what they do. And pastors say, you need to be like Jesus. Right. And I'm like, how I don't I don't right. know how to. Yes, to, I know I'm yes, supposed Jesus to. Jesus was 100 percent man, but he was also 100 percent God. Yeah, how did and he? So, how did like, he do that? How? Yeah, no, it's super hard. I, yeah, I mean, we have to have the first the desire to want to, right? Because there's been seasons in my life where people have hurt me, like deeply wounded me, and even with I'm sorry's, I, I felt like their the hurt they had caused me. I just felt justified in holding on to it. And I wasn't ready to let it go. I, I didn't want to. And like, if you're not ready and you don't want to, you can't really take the first step. Yeah. And I think uh, deciding that more, like that I want to go into more and deciding that hmm. this is only hurting me. Yeah, it, That's what I finally had to face. I remember one specific person, there was a season in my life that it was like, I cannot go any more into more if I won't just decide that I'm going to forgive. And so until that moment, I hadn't even, 
I didn't care about steps because I was not ready and willing to. Yeah. Like I felt like this, is, I'm so deeply hurt by this. It is so painful to even discuss, to talk about, much less to try to forgive. And so I think first is that, is like the, the way I got through that was people around me that I was able to say, hey, I am struggling with this, it hurts bad. How then can I? And, and I think that's important. Yeah, it's, it's super difficult. And f- forgiveness is, we say that, it, I mean, emotional health too, it's like an onion. Right, honey. And so like, there'll be somebody that I thought I forgave, but then like I get to a new point of understanding or maturity or like, unfortunately, new information comes out right, about like right. what was happening. And it's like, I made all this progress, 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 progress. And then like the tidal wave of all the feelings come back in. Right. And then you're mad at your own self. Yeah. Like maybe I didn't, maybe I haven't forgiven. Mm, right. ah, maybe I'm just as yeah. mad as I was. As I, I was know uh, with Rachel, she had a lot of family hurt yeah. growing up and like she would forgive, but then she would mature into a new season of life. Yeah. And it turned into like, how could you do that? And right. it just all would, would come back. No, yeah, it's something we've talked about before, like new seasons, you, 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 you've you talked about a bunch on, even on the podcast, that maturity is putting ourselves in other people's shoes. Yeah. But sometimes <laughs> when we find ourselves in the season of life or maybe in a scenario where those people have hurt us, so maybe we weren't a boss in a season, but then uh, we were an employee and a boss hurt us. Well, then sometimes when we step into being a boss, it reopens some of those yeah. pains of like, well, I would never treat my employee that yeah. way. Why would they have treated me yeah. that way? And so new seasons, we have to recognize maybe we're struggling again because it's just a new time yeah. or a new, we, we, we've now stepped into a new level of yeah. more. I wish uh, my boy A.A. Ron was here. Yeah. <clears throat> Aaron, Winnie's husband. Yes. His name is A-R-R-O-N, A-R-O-N. No, no it's not. <laughs> But, Just kidding. But I sometimes have a typo. So <laughs> Aaron, uh, dude, he uh, multiple times in our friendship yeah. has hit us with this like concept of wisdom that will be offended or hurt or sad about yeah. a bunch of things. It can be someone that has done us wrong. It can be someone that left our right. organization. It can be yeah. somebody that we fired who's now talking crap. Right, right, right. And, and the four of us will like be out at dinner yeah. and me and Whitney will be like, mah, 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 right. right? And Aaron will say, hey, guys, why are we wasting our time? Right. Like, why are we still talking about them? Why are we still, who cares? Right. And what, and he then goes on and talks about it. And he's basically saying like, why are we looking backwards? Right. Why are we like, giving our emotional energy to it? Why are we yeah, why are we we're trying digging to, up more pain? Yeah, right. we're trying to get somewhere in the future. We're, right, right. We're, we're tugging towards more. We're right. trying to grow. Yeah but we just keep looking in the rear view mirror. We just keep looking backwards. And like, every time he says it, I get not mad, but I'm like, man, he's, he's so right. right. And I don't know why I want to. No, because it feels good to, it feels good when you've been hurt to be justified in your hurt. Right. And I think there's a safe place oh, that like, it needs yeah. to be unpacked. Absolutely. It, it needs to be, to be unpacked with in a safe uh, place that yeah. you're not just causing more hurt. Right. But there's a point. Yeah. That's like, dude, get over it, yeah, man. Now it's time to get heal, right? Forgive, pull a Elsa, yeah. yeah, let it let go, it go. And, uh, and step into something. Well, new. let's talk about there's a couple of different like scenarios. You know what we don't have in this new setup? What do we not have? The timer. Oh, man. We usually have a timer that helps me know I... how long I'm. Easton's now doing uh, hand signals like a, like a baseball coach. <laughs> <laughs> like, to tell us like, are you either doing, doing gang doing signs yeah. or tell me what pitch to throw i don't know yes, no um i'll i'll watch it ish on my on my phone but yeah we okay let's talk about a couple things so there's some things that are like easy forgive like if you're leading okay and like your employee's late uh and you tell them and they're like i'm sorry my you know dog gave my homework kind of thing oh yeah okay i forgive you it's no big deal we can let those little things go right like there's yeah. if so i like, like get out of the shower and throw my wet towel on rachel's side of the bed oh, and then her feet are wet if she was here she would yell about it because you've done it <laughs> i haven't done it 15 years i haven't done it in a long time <laughs> but, but yeah the, those kind of these things little offenses these small things they yeah. can add up and i think they're easier to forgive sometimes yeah because uh also, we are like, oh, yeah, I do little stupid things, too. For sure. But then it's these deeper ones. So I think if you are leading, if you're tugging into more, if you're leading uh, and you're wanting to be, like, actually making progress in Elite. life, you cannot be a person 
who holds on to little things. Right. Like that is just easy. Like get over that. That's yeah. your own issue. Uh, well, we only have so much um, bandwidth. Right. We only have so much emotional capacity and unforgiveness. It just takes some of that up. Yeah. Like uh, I was watching an interview uh, with Elon Musk, yeah. you know, I talk about Elon all the yeah. time. He sold like all of his earthly pos possessions mm -hmm. and he only wears like the same seven black t-shirts right. and a couple leather jackets. He's, he's, he's removed all distraction. Right. So he can advance into more. Right. Okay. Forgiveness is, is the same thing. Absolutely. Like we have to put down this stuff because it's literally slowing down our life. You are giving an Elon I was about to give uh, an illustration based oh, on the Real Housewives. It's okay. Uh, and so our Bailey is, is uh, fist pumping. It's a different level, I guess, of uh, consumerism. But on that show, <laughs> those ladies <laughs> More like different level of debauchery. Hey, I'm just saying those. Everybody's ladies, sleeping with everybody's no, husband, they're and they're all in sleep. hot tubs. No, just, they Let's just, get some drinks. No, they drink and cuss and fight a lot. That's what they do. And welcome they, to welcome to uh, not living church. <laughs> 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 Listen, uh, but we talk about your boy Joe Rogan sometimes. He cusses Ooh, too. Yeah, so, oh, hey, does, yeah, Joe is. Yeah, so hey. Uh, I need to get on Joe and talk about Jesus. Is that these ladies are absurd. They fight about <clears throat> the stupidest things and they hold on to things from like three seasons Grudges, ago. Grudges, right. And they'll like show a recap of like when the girl said, oh yeah, you said that about my dress was ugly. And then it'll go back and she's like, yeah, your dress is ugly. It'll show it. And I think that in life we do Get that em. so often. Dude, it's we have we the hold replay. We on to these little things and we just replay it over and over and over again. It's like, let it go. Because when you watch it on the show, it's why we watch it. Because we think, I'm not as crazy as those ladies. Right. I'm not as crazy as those fools. But how Man often alive, in life Whitney, do we let ourselves do that? Dude, so, I, do the, I do the instant replay. Yeah. Don't we? Yeah, all like, the time. Like, okay, people that have hurt me or offended me. Yeah. What I do is... I sometimes can replay conversations that happened and I'm like, and they, they said that too. Yeah. They, and, and what I should have said then was right. What I should have said. Right. And they told me this lie and they did this thing and it just, it, it stokes the fire of, right. of unforgiveness. Right. Right. And so I'm like, do I want to be like that? No. Yeah. Like when I look at that, like, we're literally joking about it because it's absurd. Yeah. It's absurd. I don't want to be a crazy lady like that. However, so often in life we, we replay and we just keep having the same argument and fight and forgiveness is letting it go and saying, Hey, I'm not going to hold it on to that anymore. And I'm not going to bring it back up anymore, whether it's to them or even in our own mind. And I think that's a huge piece of what you're talking about yeah. in order to let it, it's got to get all the way out of my head or I can't put in new good things. In yeah. My head. So I guess, uh, what we're, what we're saying is, yeah. The first step of forgiveness is like deciding it's worth it to do. Absolutely. Because it's not easy. Like no, it's not. Said. And it doesn't get easier. And it will take effort. And so we have to determine. But deciding. I will do this. I do want to do this. Deciding yeah. like, this is not, I don't want to be like this anymore. Right. I don't want to carry wanna these feelings. This. I don't want to be having angry conversations. Right. Unforgiveness towards one person affects relationship with other people. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like Absolutely. if I can't trust them, maybe I can't trust them. Right. We see it with our staff team, with our leaders, yeah. volunteers all the time. Their last pastor hurt them. Their dad hurt them. Right. Somebody hurt them. And right. then now they're just terrified of me right. because I'm an authority figure. Right. They put your fa uh, their face on your head or, or on my yeah. head. And, and that's hard. <clears throat> and I think, yeah, we have to just decide, hey, my, li my life and the calling and the purpose I have to get to more is worth more than holding on to this offense. Okay. So first, yeah. we what? We we make the decision yeah. we need to make an adjustment. Right, right, absolutely. Not just because we're told to, but because like, dude, this is not good for me. Right. What's the saying that, uh, it's like a it's like a, a youth group saying that we heard all the time, yeah, something uh, like, if you, if you, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping it kills your enemy. Right. It's like, and maybe it's you've like, never heard that before, but it's something I've heard a thousand no, times, yeah. that when I'm unwilling to forgive, I'm reconsuming right. what happened in hopes that it hurts you. But meanwhile, that person's went on with their right. life. Right. They don't they don't care about right. you. No, it's true. And so we have to recognize that and then decide, okay, what am I going to do about it? So in some scenarios, we need to go and talk and have a conversation with that person. Yeah. Like, 
Uh, you and I work closely together. We're in conversation a lot. And so that means we have conflict sometimes. There's times that yeah. we, or just accidentally hurt Mi each other's or feelings. Or miscommunication. Yeah. Right. And there's been plenty of times that an I'm sorry and a absolutely I forgive you has happened in like these kind of moments. Yeah. But so often we don't want to go have those conversations with people, whether it's because it's awkward or hard or, you know, it's conflict. Yeah. But we have to decide, okay, is this relationship worth saving if so i need to go to them and say hey this hurt me i want to let you know right or hey i'm i'm confused or even whatever to try to work through yeah if there's forward. if there's somebody that you need to forgive there's i mean essentially two options yeah option one go and talk to them about it yeah or option two realize that that's not the best next step right. but forgive them forgive them in your own heart right and so you've got to decide like okay it's forgiveness time which one of these paths? Right. Do I need to take? Yeah. Do because, I have a conversation? Uh, and are they going to be ready to receive it? Right. Because nope. man alive. No. Nope. Right. You, you can't go to somebody and try to forgive them, but then you go get back into a fight. And right. I've, dude, I've done this before. We fired a guy one time. Remember this? Yes. Stupid. It was <laughs> stupid. I was stupid. Fired a guy one time. <laughs> Super glad I did it. Should have done it no six regrets. months earlier. Right. But However, then, but then I told him, yeah. I said, and Hey man, I know that you're frustrated now, but if you ever want to talk about this again or like whatever the next steps are, let's talk about it. Yeah. And he was like, okay. Like he was amicable. Yeah. But then like literally a year later after we fired the yeah. guy, I, I said, he asked if we could have a sit down meeting with me. And so I had a meeting with him and he drudged up all the strength from the past. And then he made me mad. And then I start trying to, uh, prove myself right. Right. Stupid. Like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes there's relationships yeah. that like, don't, don't rehash yeah. it. Like you've no, went, you've went separate ways. It's a good delineation. Forgive them. So if you are in a work environment and maybe you're, you're, you're uh, So work, we cut that story or is that okay? No, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> maybe your work, no, maybe your work life changes and, um, and so you don't work there anymore. Was that really someone that was your friend, a deep relationship, or was that just a boss right. or an employee? And, and you need to just let it go. That That's a let it go in your own heart. But yeah, we hold on to these things and want to come back and ha that's not a good, there's no reason to have a conversation. But if these are real people in your life that you want to continue in a relationship with, then you are going to have to face it. And yes, we have to determine first, which is the right step. I've had seasons of life where people I loved, I knew were walking through a hard season or walking mm -hmm. through a hard time and i knew they're just not in a healthy place that if i try to go do that we're what you just said we're going to blow up again and so it just meant for a season we couldn't have that conversation yeah but then later once they got through what they were going through and i got through what i was then we could come together and so we have to be aware of like where the other person is at in life yeah. uh because our expectation affects our experience mm -hmm. and so if we go expecting that they're going to be like no i'm sorry too i love you too like the reason you and i easily can have conflict conversation i know that you're going to say no me too i'm my sorry bad. too yeah. my bad whatever and we're going to always work through it whereas in other people we might not know and we if we go with the expectation that we're going to have reconciliation we're going to get more hurt we're going to have more damage which is yeah. going to cause us to regress even further yeah so we have to be aware yeah go we often think that other people are yes. going to react how we react yes this is one of our greatest weaknesses <laughs> <laughs> we think that someone else is going to react how we react right and so what we do is we go into that conversation thinking that they're going to agree or say yeah. or sorry or yeah. come with some humility yeah and if that's not someone's track record like if the person that you need to forgive if their track record is not humility their track record is not i'm sorry right then like it might not be time to have that conversation so there's a difference between forgiveness and restoration. Yeah. No, it's true. Huge. And sometimes we want to forgive just because we want the relationship to be restored. Right. They're, they're separate. Right. Forgiveness takes one person. Restoration right. takes two people. Yes. It takes two people yes. to restore. No, it's true. Something somebody yesterday said to us that I've been laughing about kind of for the last 24 hours. Uh, we were talking about if we got into a conflict scenario with them, we were just like friend talking out and I was like you know but I love you and you love me and so no matter what we walk through we'll we'll still forgive each other and she said well yeah because you're not a dirtbag oh yeah I remember and like that. 
it's such a good like uh word phrase of like if they're a dirt bag yeah don't try to go have a conversation it's not yeah. worth having yeah. like just know they're a dirt bag yeah and now i have to forgive them <laughs> and so like what you're saying is right. exactly you're saying it in a beautiful articulate way yes but when she said it she also said it in a, such a gracious way uh of like there's other words we could use but like if their track record is that they're a dirt bag then that's just they're, what they're gonna be yeah but if they're not then chances are good they want to have a conversation with you no it's great yeah but getting that in your mind right and uh justly weighing the person's character right. before right because sometimes man alive i think that we need to also forgive without expectation of and i'm sorry or right. you're right, right or thank you absolutely sometimes we have to forgive even if the other person still has their guns loaded aimed in your direction absolutely because maybe they're a dirtbag. Right, they might be, and you might find it out, but but we won't uh, acquire more hurt and pain if we're just going, hey, I'm doing this for me, and that's it. For my future, for my heart, for my more, uh, I'm gonna step into it and just uh, see what happens. Yeah. I'm gonna forgive. There's a, there's a sermon that I taught on yeah. this idea of forgiveness. No, yes. And let me tell the fast version. So Jesus told the story, it's a parable, uh, which is just like an illustration that he came up with to help us understand something. And he told a story about a servant who worked for a king that owed the king like millions of dollars. Right. And the king brings the guy in and the guy's like, man, I can't pay it. And the king's like, throw him in prison and kill his family. And the guy's like, no king, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, yeah. have mercy on me. And the king forgives the guy millions of dollars. The king's like, it's okay, I understand why yeah. whatever happened, happened. Yeah. I forgive you millions of dollars. So Jesus is telling the story, right. and then he says, and then that same servant goes out and finds another servant that owes him 20 bucks. Yeah. 20 bucks. Right. And the servant who has just forgiven millions goes and finds the servant who owes him 20 bucks. The Bible says he starts choking the guy yep. and trying to kill him, and right. he calls the jailers to throw him in jail. And so the king finds out about it. Right. And the king calls the God first servant back in and says, right. man, I forgave you of so much right. that you couldn't even forgive the other servant for so little. He has the dude thrown into prison. Yeah. And it's one of these, uh, it's one of these parables that dude, when you really read it and like right. meditate on it, there's so much there. Right. But I think when I realize that I'm the middle servant, that right. like, I've been forgiven for so much. Absolutely. I've been mean to my parents. Right. I've been rude to my wife. I've been disrespectful to my friends. Right. I've, I've told, been a dirtbag. I've been a dirtbag. <laughs> right. I've lied. Right. I've manipulated. Yeah. I've I've sinned against God willingly. Right. right. But like, my mom forgave me. Like, yeah. God forgave me. My right. wife forgave, my children forgive. Like, Absolutely. I've been forgiven of millions of dollars of, right. of, of failure. But yet I find myself right. wanting to choke people mm -hmm. physically. I, <laughs> I've wanted to physically choke people <laughs> who, who have hurt and offended me. Right. And when we can just, uh, I think I say in the sermon something about like when we can realize how much we've been forgiven, right. it can become easier to forgive. No, it's true that, that we- And maybe nobody in life's ever been nice to you. God, God is. Yeah. Even if you don't believe him. God loves you and he wants to forgive Absolutely. you. Absolutely. No, yeah. yeah. Something uh, Rachel says a lot is that grace is getting something we don't deserve. Hmm. Mercy is re uh, not receiving what we do deserve. And I yeah. think understanding the mercy and grace that we've received in our lives, the times where we should have been, uh, like I can think about in high school, this one time that I like cheated on a test and the teacher was like, let me go like didn't didn't get on literally let me off with i mean i got a zero <laughs> one time twice. one but, time no hey you know me i try not to break the my rules. diploma uh, is brought to you by cheating <laughs> no, don't say that. but i remember that like the grace she gave me in that of like she should have like sent me the principal and done right. all the things I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that again. But also I have so much respect and ad like admiration because she saw who I was. Yes. And she saw you were it, sad about and it. Like, and like, uh, yeah, remorseful and all the things. And so like, yeah, when I think about all these times in my life where people have, have given me what I didn't deserve, 
why would I, why would I keep holding on to this? And I think what happens is that we, we label our offenses, mm. you know, like how they hurt us. Yeah. So yeah, I've hurt Aaron, man, really deeply in life. But then I think about these times where I'm like, yeah, but now he hurt me like this, you know, I was like, wait, wait, they're not. But in my mind, I measure, oh, that that's probably, that's worse than how I would have felt if I mm. did what I did to him. Yeah. And that's where we really get stuck. And it's the same in that regard that like, yeah, that in my mind, I, this is not what the Bible says, in my mind, that guy's like, well, yeah, but the king has a whole lot of money. So what he forgave me is like a whole oh, lot. Yeah, he justifies. And so he justifies in his head like- I really need that 20 I, but bucks. But I need the 20 bucks. I right. gotta go buy my kids some Nikes or whatever. And like in our head, it's like we, we measure the offenses and like, no, like sin is sin, hurt is hurt, pain is pain we all screw up in times. And so like understanding that really, I think has a piece of the empathy at least that we can have for other people. Yeah. Yeah. No, you just said a giant word of empathy. Yeah. No, um, it's huge. Yeah. Before we move on yeah, from yeah, that, yeah. uh, man, if you're dealing with unforgiveness, I'd really encourage you to go and watch that sermon. We'll no, link it. Super. We'll link it. Uh, it's in a sermon series called cool story, bro where we were teaching on parables of Jesus yeah. and like we got really deep. It's a great message. Yeah. Like there's part of me that's just like, maybe I need to just pull those notes out here, but no, go, that's another conversation, yeah. new context, go listen to that and allow like the word to minister over you. Right. Well, okay. uh, the word empathy yeah. uh, came to like, really was what came to heal some of the, in that specific relationship too, that I was speaking of in my own heart from that message because we you said a hmm. phrase um you said like in the context of it you were like hey just but also remember like your mom was just a lady doing her best right your dad was just a dude trying to like be a dad and like when we put ourselves in the context of like oh those people have walked through hurt and pain and disappointment and yeah. struggles and and heartache and so yeah they may now have turned out to be a dirtbag because they did not yeah. handle the season of life correctly yeah but but they're just people too okay say say it again so yeah like whoever you, hurt you your yeah. boss is just a dude trying to lead an organization just a lady trying to like make the numbers meet on the on the like p l sheet at the end of it like they're just trying and right. like maybe we don't know the context we don't right. know what they inherited from the last boss we don't know this scenario of what's happening in their home and their in their life with their marriage with their kids we don't know all those contexts they're just people no, trying so good and your your sister is just a lady yeah who's like full of her own insecurities right no <laughs> your, it's true. your brother I was at a, a life group uh, and like at the end of the life, it's like a small group of people. Yeah. At the end, all the men broke off in the kitchen were at the table and there were like six guys around the table and th through conversation, none of them were in in relationship with yeah. their brothers. Yeah. None, all of them like hated their brothers, like don't yeah. men. And I talked about like, guys, they're just, they're, right. you're, they're just a dude. Right. Like your brother, I know he's a jerk or whatever, right. he's a dirtbag. But he's just trying to like right. pay his bills and keep his job and yeah. like no, be a good dad. No, it's true. And when we can put into perspective, what, yeah. it's so good what you just no, said. No, yeah. I mean, it's the it's the maturity piece of putting ourselves in their shoes. And, and that's what we don't ever want to do because we think people should respond the way that we would respond. Yeah. And so I think the struggle is for people who've hurt, I know at least because I know both of our like deep stories of, of pain, I I can't. I can't put myself in their shoes because I would not make those same choices. Yeah. Is what I think. But choosing empathy. Correct. But it's a choice to say it. Y you helped me a ton with this. Yeah. So we did an exercise um uh, well, a while ago. A couple years ago, where I was like it was after I even preached this message. Like yeah. I preached it. Yeah. And I was still wrestling a new layer of the onion appeared. Right. And uh and I said, I just need to understand some things. And yeah. so Whitney and I sat down and we built like the other person's psychology profile. <laughs> we like built the list of like hurt and pain and struggle that we knew about. That, Only that, the piece we knew about. That they had walked through. Right. Not and even. Like their traumas. Right. Because we all have those. Yeah. And like, and granted in knowing that, that was only a small snippet because there's so much that like we didn't know, you know, and one, and we literally put it down on paper and it was super hard. Yeah. But once we put down on paper, like 
why they were a dirtbag. Yeah, right. Like the ethos of their dirtbagness. Right. The, their origin story of being a jerk. Yeah. Once we created their origin, I was like, of course they did that to me. Right. Right. Of course this is how they yeah. live their life. Exactly. And it, it like, listen, if you have a parent who's garbage, but their parents were garbage. Right. When we can really understand like what their 40 years of life was up yeah. to you. Yeah. Then maybe it, yeah. maybe it helps us have some empathy. Well, and, and on the, it's on not the, easy. Well, it's not no, easy. It's not easy. And, <laughs> this, and on the flip of it, what have we been able to receive in our life? Like for, for me, when I recognize, man, I've been in deep community. I I've been surrounded by people who also care about their emotional health, who, who, hmm. who have fought with me to help fight for my emotional health. When I recognize the like healing I've been able to walk through, I'm like, I, I am further along than them. I, I in, in that capacity, That's good. I, I, I shouldn't be so, begrudging and frustrated and i think especially when they're people that we look up to or we honor and we respect when they hurt us it's really hard to forgive because they should have known better mm -hmm. but that empathy list for us it helped us realize ah, maybe they didn't know better it's so good man it's so good what you're saying like uh i don't even know how to put it all the way into words like we are where we are because of the environment that we're in correct and so if right. we can identify the environment they were in correct it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, going up to a, a person that's homeless and has no right. money, no job, and asking them why they're not buff. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, dude, why don't you have big muscles and why can't right. you, why aren't you physically in shape? Right. They're like, dude, I'm eating like I'm just garbage pizza right. and soup kitchens and like, I'm not in good shape because of my environment. Right. And I think that the same is true for our emotional yeah, action absolutely. and for our, how we treat other people. Yeah. And like, one of the reasons that you and I have been able to take the steps towards more is because we've helped foster an environment that we live in. Right. We've created culture that we live in. We try to create culture for those that are near us yeah. that we can be pursuing emotional health. Absolutely. But many times the people that hurt us most were not um, developed in that type of environment. Right. And so when a wild dog acts like a wild dog, it's because it grew up as a wild dog. No, absolutely. Right. God, it's, it's true. so good, man. It, it, they it, treated you that way because that's just what they know. They right. just bite. And they it, just know how to bite. Yeah. The empathy that if we can put empathy, it switches, or at least for me, it's, it switched it from hurt, offense, anger to like sadness, like sadness for them. Like, yeah. um, not to like be belittling and say, oh, I feel bad for them. That's not what I mean. But a like, I get it. I, I, I'm sad that that's the response they had because of the circumstances they were in. And then recognizing there's got to be even more things that I don't know that are like even more painful that like, man, that that must be hard. And yeah. and that is not something that's fun to do when someone has done you wrong. I mean, wrecked your life, legitimately done horrible abandoned things, you. abandoned yeah. you are you know stolen from you whatever um it's not easy but it's recognizing that like i i don't know all the story and what i do know man I, i'm grateful i get to be where i am in my life and so yeah it has not been an easy journey by any stretch of the imagination but it's freeing yes it's freeing so if there's somebody out there that you if Abby, as you've been listening yeah whatever the name is or the group of people that you're thinking about it's worth it Absolutely. to start pushing down the road, uh, ripping off the layer of the onion. Yeah. I, no. I've got another thought, okay. but I see you got one. No, go. yeah, you go first, it's fine. Mine's a lander, but. Oh, okay, well, I mean, my mine of that is just like, if you're gonna take those steps, make sure you're not doing it by yourself. Make sure, like yeah. what we just talked about, we sat one day and made a list together. Um, in the season where I needed to like step into more and, and really forgive, you know, Aaron was already like, hey, and then you and Rachel both were like, hey, I think this is a good time for it. We like all kind of talked together because afterward I needed a place to process even that conversation because I went and had a conversation, but with the, first I had a conversation with y'all to help me set my correct expectation yeah. before I went into the conversation. And then afterward came back to process the conversation I had to say, 
I think I think I got it like I think I get this right. I think I I think I feel the way I'm supposed to feel. I think I have the empathy I'm supposed to have. And now I feel so like, oh, I, I've forgiven. That that relationship is not healed. It's not whole. It's right. not completely restored in all those pieces. But but I no longer carry that weight that I was carrying. Mm-hmm. Um, I no longer carry, l- l- literally, it was a weight tied to my ankles that as Everywhere. I was trying to go into more, it was just pulling me back. And I yeah. couldn't keep making progress. Uh, it was just getting too heavy. And so I feel like it's it's very difficult. It's possible. But if you've walked through deep hurt, deep pain, whether it's counseling or whether it's community, it's it's not really possible to fully heal and, and forgive without somebody in your life helping you and carrying you along. We say that like almost every time, but no, it's it's, it's about having somebody with you to help. Yeah, be strong when you're weak. Yeah, and to speak truth when you start listening to the lies. Right, right, absolutely. It's easy to start listening to lies about what happened and right how you deserve what they did. And right, having some other people help. Mm-hmm. The last thought that I had. Yeah, go. Is if you're currently in a relationship where there's hurt that's happening there's abuse that's happening there's neglect that's happening sometimes distance is better than a consistent i'm sorry oh oh i'm saying if you're out there and you're getting punched oh right no there's no like if if you're being consistently mistreated I don't want you to listen to this or even the last one of I'm sorry uh-huh. and and anybody to turn into a doormat. No, right. And so like if you need to get yourself to a place of safety. Right, 100%. Reach out to us. No, right. Reach out to a local church that you have a friend who goes to or something yeah. and like right. don't we, just we, stay in it. Right, we talked about it last time. I'm sorry uh, requires then some change, some actual shift in behavior. Yeah. And so like if there's not, and you're yeah you're being uh, treated poorly. That's not that's not going to work. Yeah, and so that's kind of a heavy. No, piece, yeah, but, but it's it, but, important. You know, I know that we're all carrying we're all yeah. carrying big stuff, and so sometimes the best way to start to forgive yeah. is to stop the offenses from coming. Yeah. If I just True. kept punching Whitney, right, and she just and she just Get kept saying right, and I just kept saying I'm sorry, right, psh, I'm sorry, psh, I'm right. sorry, psh, I'm. S- at some point, right. like the only way for her to begin to for, the forgiveness process Absolutely. would be it's to get space. away from it. Yeah, no, it's good. I should have not used myself as the hitter, but it's fine. Well, if we, Whitney was hitting me, <laughs> which might be more likely, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. No, and and last but not least, uh, don't forget in the f- process of forgiveness to forgive yourself. That okay. if you made decisions or if you've uh, had failure, if there's been seasons of your life that you're not proud of, uh, you got to forgive yourself in order to be able to forgive other people well. So Yeah, because the you that made the decision to get right. into that relationship is not the you of today. Right, right, right. No, right. I put myself into relationships that allowed me to be hurt and I gave people power into my life Yeah. in a season that I didn't have maturity like I do now. Right. And so just have grace that like you were a kid. Yeah, yeah. Have, have grace, grace that grace you didn't yourself. have, there wasn't anybody else around to be a right. friend. And so Absolutely. you made friends with this person and you right. gave trust to this person and then they hurt you. Yeah, like whatever forgive it is. yourself yeah. that, yeah. you know, whatever it's okay. you've done. Yeah, that's all. I Dude, think that's a good. good conversation. Okay, you know, my favorite thing what? is that this, uh, a couple people reached out. Yep. So they watched, I'm sorry, and then reached out and asked for us to talk about forgiveness. That's right. And so if you have any topics, any ideas, any suggestions, about uh, hurdles of you tugging into more. Yeah. Hit us up. Let us That's know. Right. We have uh, uh, today, right? Yep. We've got a lunch with a with a fellow uh, member of the tug team. Yeah. Who's yeah. driving in from another uh, state in, in Texas to yeah. come and just ask us some uh, ministry leadership next level questions. Yeah. And so, if there's anything that we can do to help you advance and Absolutely. step into more, uh, reach out and let That's us right. know. That's right. Yep. Love y'all. See ya. Peace.